You don't know real frustration until you've tried to draw the Bohr-Rutherford diagram of xenon. The reason is that once you get past calcium, you're not filling electrons from the inside of the atom out anymore. By the time you get here, you have to backtrack to the third shell, jump back up to the fourth, then the fifth, etc. It really would help to know the order of filling. First, second, third, fourth. That's all normal and in order. But then you backtrack to the third. There's six extra electrons for the fourth, then the fifth, etc., etc. And it gets complicated. It gets even more complicated with the fact that this 4F, 5F here fit into here. So it's like sixth, fourth, fifth, sixth again. It's complicated, but don't worry. I'm here for you. I always am. The center of a Bohr-Rutherford diagram is always protons and neutrons. We got 54 protons for xenon. It's 131 as a mass. 131 minus 54. Uh, I don't know. What is this? It's like seven, 77 neutrons. That's 54 protons, 77 neutrons. That's just the nucleus. Now I'm gonna put my first, second, third, and fourth shell here. I'm eventually gonna need more than that, but I wanna remind you about this order of filling. Two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second, eight in the third, and two in the fourth. That takes us all the way to calcium, or 20 electrons. This is six, eight, 10 total, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. There you go, 20 electrons. We have to get all the way to 54. My goodness. We are currently here. We've put two electrons in the 4S. Now we get to put 10 into the third shell. D subshells hold up to 10 electrons. So, in the third circle, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Wait, I needed 10, now I'm done. That's 18 electrons in that third shell. I have to go through here as well, because xenon sits here on the periodic table. I need to put six electrons in the fourth shell. P subshells hold six each. If you want to know how I knew that, it's because this block is 6Y. So, six electrons into the fourth. One, two, three, four, five, six extra electrons in the fourth. All right, now it looks like my fourth shell is full, but it's technically not. Once you get there, you go down here, fifth shell. All right, I'm going to need a fifth one. S subshells hold two electrons. See, this block is too wide. Just two electrons will go on this fifth circle for now. So, fifth shell, two electrons, one, two. Again, xenon is here, so I have to put an extra 10 electrons in the fourth shell. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now we go to the fifth shell again. Where's xenon here? Xenon's at the very end of the row. So that's one, two, three, four, five. All six of the 5p electrons will get drawn in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it looks like my fifth shell is full because it has a complete octet. But as you know, once you get pat, once you get to the third, eight is not the actual limit. Makes it stable, but it's not the actual limit. This is your Bohr-Rutherford diagram for xenon. It has two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second, 18 in the third, another 18 in the fourth, and eight in the fifth. I think if you add all those together, you're gonna get 54. And if you're wondering if I'm right, I am. See, xenon is here on my periodic table, and if you look at the electron arrangement that's written here, 2, 8, 18, 18, 8. 
I'm right and so are you because you are following along with the absolute champion, me. Best of luck.